Uh, my name is Councillor Steve Williams, I'm sitting with Councillor Dave Mitchell and Alan Brickhouse. Uh, welcome to the Highways and Traffic Panel um, for Tuesday the 17th of March. Um, any declarations of interest? Thank you. First item on the agenda is objection to proposed weighting and loading restrictions, Birkenhead Market Service Road. Can we have the officer's report, please? Good morning. Uh, this report considers an objection submitted against the proposal to introduce weighting and loading restrictions on the Birkenhead Market Service Road Birkenhead. The proposal has been developed at the request of the Grange and Pyramid Shopping Centre and Birkenhead Market Port Management Teams following concerns about obstructive parking and accessibility for trains and customers wishing to load and unload. The proposed traffic regulation order will prohibit parking and loading on parts of the service road and allow loading and unloading for vehicles within the designated parking bays. Introducing this proposal will ensure the designated bays within the service road are kept clear for loading and unloading operations, and such a facility will assist the public businesses and customers. Consultation on the scheme was undertaken during July and September 2014, which included the publication of notices on the service road and the local press. One letter has been received objecting to the proposal and contents of the objective concerns, along with detailed response to outline in part three of the report. Following consideration of the objection, officers remain of the opinion that the proposed TRO is necessary to support the servicing of existing businesses. However, it has also been recognised that there is scope to make modifications without compromising the overall aims of the scheme. Further consultation on the modified TRO was carried out in January 2015 with those who responded to the written on time in July and September last year. However, no objections were withdrawn. The Grange and Pyramid Shopping Centre and Birmingham Market have been consulted on the modified proposal and support the changes. The panel is requested to note the objection received and the officer's responses and recommends the regeneration and environment policy and performance committee that the proposed draft regulation or the modification as shown on the attached drawing be approved for implementation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions at this stage? No. Okay, if we can hear from the petitioner, Mr. Blaise. Well, I'm um, not actually the petitioner, I'm the objector, but uh, there's no petition on this one. I've uh, got uh, some copies of the particular uh, regulations I'm going to refer to in what I'm going to say. I've got a co copy for each of the uh, councillors and one for your legal advisor. Do you mind if I hand those out now? No, fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, most of uh, what I objected to regarding this traffic regulation order is covered in the report. Uh, unfortunately, the map at the end uh, <laughs> is printed in a black and white. It makes more sense in colour. Uh, but the only thing I wanted to add to what's actually in the report is that, as you can see from what I've given in front of you, there were regulations called the Local Authorities Traffic Orders Exemptions for Disabled Persons England Regulations 2000. And Although I think some modifications were made to the loading restrictions uh, from the last meeting, uh, this is in relation to the waiting restrictions, uh, which is the bits which are uh, no waiting and loading at any time, double yellow lines with curb lips. Now, basically the curb lips means that people with blue badges can't park uh, in those sections. It's not very clear on this printout at all because of the black and white way in which it's printed. But if you look at uh, regulation, seven and eight in what I've given you. Uh, regulation eight which is, uh, is headed exemptions and prohibitions on waiting at all times or during specified periods and is on page three. It says this regulation applies to an order made under section 169, 35, 45 or 46 of 1984 Act which includes a provision. Now when the public notice was published in the press it did say that it was being made under section one so it is something that's covered by these regulations. And it goes on to say, prohibits 
except for the purposes of loading or unloading. Now, uh, obviously on the bits where there were waiting restrictions, the curb lips means there's no loading or unloading anyway, so it can't be said that there's going to be loading or unloading carrying on there because it's prohibited under this proposed traffic regulation order anyway. Anyway, it carries on to say, prohibited to waiting vehicles or any class of vehicles in a road at all times of day or during one or more specified periods of the day does not apply to a bus lane or cycle lane, obviously there's no bus lane or cycle lane there. It's not a provision to current affairs between Regulation 7.1. 7.1 is uh, one of those things whereby you can only park for so long, uh, one of these kind of waiting bays restricted, yeah. Uh, anyway, it then goes on to say that an order to which this regulation applies shall include an exemption from the prohibition in accordance with whichever paragraphs 3 and 4 is appropriate in favour of any vehicle displaying a disabled <coughs> person's badge in a relevant position. Now, it says where the period of the prohibition uh, four applies because it's at all times this particular no waiting and loading. So, subsection four of regulation eight says where the period of the prohibition exceeds three hours, exemption should be for a period of three hours, subject to conditions that, and then it goes over to page four. Uh, the period of exempted waiting does not begin uh, less than one hour after the period, a uh, previous period of exempted waiting by the same vehicle on the same road, the same day and the parking disc is displayed in a relevant position on the vehicle mark to show the quarter hour period during the period of exempting waiting began. So in other words, it's set, the regulations are saying that you have to take into account uh, the needs of blue badge users. And uh, in fact, the explanatory note states that regulation eight relates to exemptions from prohibitions on waiting at all times or during specified periods. So I'd like an answer as to uh, why officers ha haven't considered Regulation 8, because obviously the waiting restrictions aren't on the loading bays. The loading bays have slightly different uh, restrictions. I think they're classed in the reports as loading restrictions as opposed to waiting restrictions, or they're probably clearer to call them parking restrictions, and uh, whether they're going to modify the traffic regulation order to include on the bit where it says proposed no waiting and loading at any time, to make that double yellow lines rather than double yellow lines with curb lifts, which would allow people with blue badges to park there for up to three hours. I think that's clear. Ish. Not, not <laughs> um, okay, if we just pause it there, if I can just speak to our, our legal advisor. Yeah. Are, you, are you happy with this? I, 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 I know the legislation, yeah. and my understanding is that the necessary exemptions have been made blue badge holders. It's not because what the traffic regulation order does is impose um, restrictions in relating to loading and unloading. And as it says on page three of the report, it says the proposed TRO would allow blue badge holders to park within the designated areas for loading and unloading. So that is a specific exemption for blue badge holders. The, the, the traffic regulation order isn't about parking, it's about restricting parking and un unloading as far as I'm aware. Yes, thank you for your chair. The, the exemption for blue badge holders is, is in relation to waiting restrictions and parking. The restrictions that we're looking at are loading restrictions. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, now there, are, there, are, there will be days or there are days shown on the drawing within the plan which will allow blue badge holders to stop to load and unload. Um, and those bays are, are laid out in accordance with the um, procedures regulations in terms of how many bays there are within a, within a um, set distance of the road. Um, the three hour exemption that Mr Brace is talking about only applies on waiting restrictions, does not apply on loading restrictions. Is there a time on loading? There isn't. Okay. No, I mean, there may be a, I mean, in terms of enforcement. We probably around sort of 10 minutes. We would look at what's nearby in the area, whether it's likely that any loading will be taking place in the vicinity where that particular vehicle will be parked and take those factors into consideration. So basically it's, it's a reasonable time for people to unload the contents of a vehicle? Yes, if it was immediately adjacent to something or it, 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 in this vicinity if there's Argos, you mm -hmm. may be collecting something from Argos or how long does it take to place an order? online or on the phone and go and collect it and return it and we, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes might be a reasonable sort of time that uh, may be taken into consideration based on the 
properties are around where the vehicles parked. Okay. Does that? Sorry, I'm, I'm just yeah. going to clarify. I wasn't referring to the loading bays. I mean, we're still loading restrictions. I was referring to the waiting restrictions on the bits of the Birkenhead Market Service Road, which aren't loading bays. Because there's basically two parts to this proposed yeah, it's, it's TRO. It's between either the loading bays or actually where people are wanting to park. And that's where we need clarification of what's, what's required. Well, I'd say that the, uh, through you, Chair, I'd say the, um, the waiting restrictions that are proposed are no waiting at any time and no loading at any time. So they're not just no waiting restrictions. They include no loading yeah. elements. Yeah. If they were just double yellow lines, no waiting at any time, then yes, there would be a three hour exemption for blue badge holders, but they include a no loading at any time restriction on the double yellows, which will be the curb blips. So that pre precludes blue badges from, from parking for the three hours. But yeah. the, there are loading bays within the road that are, that are shown on the plan where blue badge holders could go to load and unload. In addition, on the loading restrictions, the double yellow lines and the double curb blips, there are allowances to, to drop off and pick up passengers and hand luggage and this sort of thing. Um, but there are no, there is no allowance for, for sort of three hour parking with the, with the badge. Right. So that's literally stopping that waiting, just picking up and dropping down as passengers? Yes. Okay. Do you wish to come back on that? Uh, well, I, I think the. As I say, I think maybe I was misinterpreted in officers thought I was referring to the restrictions on the loading bays at the start, whereas this was in relation to the waiting restrictions. Uh, I mean, the as, as a, I think Keith pointed out, if it's double yellows, a person with a blue badge can park there for three hours. But if it's double yellows with curb lips, the curb lips mean they're loading and unloading it and mean that anybody with a blue badge couldn't park there for three hours. My point was that these, the specific purpose of these regulations was, when considering traffic regulation orders, to include exemptions for disabled people so that their needs were considered when formulating a traffic regulation order. And that for the waiting restrictions, I'm not talking about the, the, the loading bays, uh, because obviously that's a different issue, because that loading bays wouldn't be covered by this because it says except for the purpose of loading or unloading. So I agree that this particular thing doesn't apply to the loading bays, but there's no loading or unloading with proposed or carrying on where these waiting restrictions are proposed. So I don't see why the traffic regulation order shouldn't be modified because of the effect of regulation 8 to change the waiting restrictions to uh, proposed no waiting at any time, so it'd be double yellows. The reason why is also that one of the reasons given behind this traffic regulation order was they said that people with uh, blue badges were parking in the loading bays. Now obviously if this gets approved, officers are saying well people with blue badges can park in the loading bays for loading and unloading purposes. Now <laughs> the average member of the public is going to think oh well if I've got a blue badge, I can park in the loading bay, so it's going to carry on the problem that this is supposed to resolve. If you allow uh, people with blue badges to park in the bits that are proposed at no waiting and loading at any time, they will at least be outside the loading bays, therefore the loading bays will be free for vehicles to come and load and unload, which I thought was the whole purpose behind this traffic regulation order anyway. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. The, the, the problem we have, we can't decide here on what may happen. What you're saying is quite right, people may do. It's like when we um, agree to the 20 mile an hour restriction, if people are going to turn out to 13, 14, we can't, we can't foresee that. But that's where the enforcement would then come in. And if something was passed and then people committed the offence on it, obviously that's when the enforcement side of things would come in. So we can't really decide on what, what people may do. We've got to do what's we think it is right here at all and decide whether it is right what the officers are suggesting and as long as we're uh, that the legal side of it is correct which you at one time thought wasn't i think you agree now that the legal procedure is correct on it on well my, my previous um, <coughs> objection uh, 
under another set of regulations was to do with the loading restrictions. And I think officers agreed that at that time it couldn't be decided by the panel, it had to be decided by a public inquiry unless it was modified. And the loading restrictions have been modified so that they comply with those but that particular set of regulations, but this is a different set of regulations, and I don't think officers have actually had sight of the the uh, regulations are handed out to councillors and mm. your legal advisor. I, I, I know, I, I get it, I, I'm grateful you brought this book. Too much, I'd love to say it. Yeah. 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 We're, we're not going to attempt to understand this, but as long as we're being told that we're in the legal um, remit of getting it right. We're happy with that, that, that side of the legal thing. Um, is there anything the officers came out about that it was mentioned about it being a private road? Is that going to come into anything? Well, <coughs> the introduction this proposal uh, will provide legis legislative backing for um, the council civil enforcement officers to undertake enforcement on there as well. Right. Um, so we will be able to control the, uh, the loading. Just explain, what's the current position with it got? I mean, it is a private road. Uh, I don't know who, who exactly is the owner. Um, could the owner, for instance, currently plant vehicles that park? No, there's been a, a legal traffic regulation order on this road since 1977 at the request of the landowner. As, as a local authority, we could do that. The, the, the landowner himself could say we don't want the local authority to undertake enforcement and they undertake their own enforcement and they could simply put barriers or, or some control measures um, for the, and, and control who comes in and out of that service road. Um, they don't want to do that, they, they want to do the local authority to carry on with the enforcement and these proposals should facilitate trade and customers being able to make use of the, the, the store holders and, and the um, shops on the Princess and Milton pavement areas. Similar proposals, uh, so similar restrictions are being put in place in the Oliver Street service road area, so the, the area by Shop Mobility and BNM within there, and, and that has, has worked well. Um, we haven't had issues with blue badge holders parking in the loading bays for, for three hours and, and being given a, a, a county charge notice. And also through the appeals process, if, if we do issue a county charge notice and somebody says, I'm loading, I'm going here to collect an item, then, then they're exempt and, and that ticket's cancelled. So county charge notices do get issued, but they do get cancelled in the right circumstances as, as well. So. I don't foresee these restrictions being um, problematic uh, for the area. I think it's beneficial to the, for the market for all traders and, and the uh, precinct traders as well. And currently, is this area to uh, a significant number of blue bag holders in the park? In the, I think uh, colleagues in, in, in traffic have undertaken um, recent surveys, and I think the average number on, on a day is around 10. The maximum number seen is around 14. Um, there are a number of traders who park there all day, which they shouldn't do. And, you know, in, in, in terms of that, um, they park in causing obstructions, I, I believe, in certain locations as, as to where they park. Um, but they continue to, to, to do that and they will either move their car and park it slightly somewhere else and, and reset the clock on the badge. And, and, and those type of activities. So they're not sort of um, helping the service road function. Um, at particular times, maybe, maybe Easter or, or Christmas, the, the, the market hall coaches come in and bring shoppers into the area and it can get quite congested uh, within that service road, which we're trying to avoid and make it a pleasurable experience for the shoppers to come in. And in terms of alternative, I was a little unclear from the report as to whether, if at one stage it talks about there is a shortage of, of, of um, spaces for blue bag holders to park in, and then it seems to suggest that there isn't a shortage, so I wasn't quite sure exactly what, what we thought the position was. 
Uh, I mean, I mean, in terms of the parking standards, the, the authority meets those, those standards in, in, in terms of that. If you look at the private car parks that range in the pyramids, um, there does appear to be more spaces available within those um, car parks as to why they might not get as used as much by the badgers as, as the council spaces. Um, could have an opinion on that, but um, maybe not relevant. Can I, can I say something? Yes, please. Uh, I, we, went, we all went on a, a site visit last year, I think it was about September, was it? Mm -hmm. And the nearest car park, which is kind of between the bus station, the market and the shops, has a, a row of blue badge spaces there. And when we went on our site visit, all those blue badge spaces were all taken by people with blue badges. And I went, I think it was a week last Friday, to have another look at the road. And again, all those spaces there at that car park, all those blue badges were taken. And I, I do know also that um, they're recently consulting on the changes to Birkenhead Town Centre. And I noticed from the artist's plans, that car park by the bus station, there's a plan to put a cafe in there, which will reduce the amount of parking, and obviously that will reduce the amount of blue, blue badge parking even further in that car park and put more pressure on the... Where, where will those blue badge uh, holders park? That's why I suggested that it would be a good idea to change the restrictions from the double yellow lines with curved lips to double yellow so people with blue badges could park in the Blackland Market Service Road outside of the loading lines. But that's still to be decided, that consultation hasn't even started. As you know, I asked the question last night and that was the answer I received. In that, um
that's um, a, a very valid point because it's more important that we get it right now. As I said, that's yeah, why I, I don't even intend to, to yeah. understand that. As long yeah. as you do, you yeah. tell us doing I've been things. asked other questions on this, but I haven't been asked this particular question, and I just want to be absolutely clear mm -hmm. with a word with the officers. Okay, if we can have how long we talk about it. Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Five minutes. Yeah. Five minutes. Yeah. Yeah.